Okay, so first of all, what does family friendly even mean? Welcome to Genetic Counseling Awareness Channel with Katie Lee. All the best resources you'll ever need at Genetic Counseling Awareness Channel. Hi guys, it's me, Katie Lee CGC. I'm a certified genetic counselor, and today is Wannabe Wednesdays. On Wannabe Wednesdays, I talk about topics of interest for those of you who are interested in learning more about genetic counseling as a profession, and for those of you who are applying too. Today, I wanted to talk about the idea of whether or not genetic counseling is a family-friendly job. One of the things I had heard about genetic counseling, and I'm not exactly sure where I heard it from anymore, but back 10, yeah, 10, 11, 12 years ago, was that genetic counseling is really family friendly. I think I believed it because it was, and it still is, a female-dominated career path. Having children and having children young was something I always wanted to do. So I was looking for a career where I could have a decent salary, but also have flexibility to spend time at home with my kiddo, maybe work part-time. I wasn't exactly sure what it would look like for me, what balance I would want to strike, but I definitely knew I did not want to be working 60 hours a week, 70 hours a week. I don't even want to be working 50 hours a week once I had children. So I was really interested in genetic counseling for that reason, as well as the fact that it doesn't require a lot of school after undergrad. Into this calculation in my mind of how family friendly is a career, I calculated, you know, how much school is required post undergrad, how many years, and how much student loans am I going to have? because I'm going to need to work to pay those off. So becoming something like a doctor that's going to require probably hundreds of thousands of dollars of student loans was off the table for me. And it seemed much more reasonable as far as the time commitment of just two years for the master's degree, as well as the amount of student loans, which I think I was very fortunate to have some help from my family, but also I did have to take out student loans, I think around $40,000 or so of student loans to finish up my master's degree. The pretty fair rule that I've heard is that your student loans should not be more than your starting salary um, your first year out of school. So that was definitely 40,000, definitely less than my starting salary. Had I needed to pay for my whole grad school expenses, it probably would have been fairly close to a starting salary. I think I define family friendly in a few different ways. One, the job is flexible. You can take off enough PTO for yourself when you're sick, for a child when they're sick, and be able to attend like all of those fun things that happen at elementary schools and even daycare, like, you know, spring musical festival and those types of celebrations at school. And it not be stressful to have someone cover for you or for you to leave earlier in the afternoon to go to those types of things. Um, additionally, not working much over 40 hours a week. I knew I didn't want to be working overtime all the time. That was not the life I envisioned for myself. 40 hours a week is for me plenty to dedicate to work. Three, the salary is good enough to allow you to enjoy time with your family and, you know, do things like vacation. Now that I've worked in three different genetic counseling roles, and I've also seen and have many friends and acquaintances that are in all different sorts of roles as genetic counselors, I don't necessarily think genetic counseling is the most family-friendly job ever. That being said, I definitely think there are certain positions that you can find as a genetic counselor that are extremely family-friendly, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that. My first role as a genetic counselor was at an IVF center, and it was extremely family-friendly in the sense that I could easily take off or let my colleagues know if I had a sick kiddo and couldn't show up that day and there was no stress about it. My colleagues were amazing and everyone had each other's back. It was really family friendly in that way. And also in the sense that we did not have access to our emails or the EMRs. We didn't have laptops. There was no work happening outside of work ever. So it was really low stress. At the same time, that clinic did not have any paid maternity leave, which is a huge downfall. Now, you know those things going in. So I saved for my maternity leave so I could just pull from savings and take a full maternity leave but that was definitely not family friendly. Now I've also worked in industry and worked for a lab and that job was much more demanding time-wise. I spent over 40 hours working most weeks and while I really enjoyed what I did and getting to talk with the patients and I liked my team and my colleagues, it was simply too much work for what I wanted at this time and this stage of my life. 
I wanted to spend more time with my son and I didn't want to be juggling emails and follow up stuff after my workday was done and my son was home from daycare. So that was not a great fit for me having a preschool age child. I moved on to a part-time job, which was 20 hours a week. And now I'm actually, I'll have to talk about this in one of my next videos. I'm getting ready to transition to a different job again, a part-time job for 20 hours a week. I used to think those part-time jobs were really hard to come by. Now that I'm getting much more confident in my expertise and I've really built up my CV as a genetic counselor with an expertise in reproductive medicine, I've actually negotiated my last two jobs and got them down to part-time even though they wanted full-time. And it's worked really well so far for me. I don't know if any of you who are parents feel this way, but for me as a mom, it's really hard. Like there is no such thing as a perfect work-life balance. Even that concept of of work-life balance, like is life really just one thing and works the other? There's like so many things that go into life. It's not just work and life. Um, but that balance gets even harder after a kiddo and I've struggled to find that balance. I've switched back and forth between part-time and full-time. And ultimately I think part-time is a better fit for me. I like working around 20, maybe 25 hours a week so I can both really enjoy my job and fully focus on my child and enjoy him a lot too. I know plenty of genetic counselors who work in a clinic, like a hospital setting, as well as genetic counselors who work in industry, they work for laboratories that work a lot of overtime. They work more than 40 hours a week to get their job done. And this is actually addressed in the professional status survey that I've mentioned before. The 2020 professional status survey showed that almost three quarters of genetic counselors report working overtime. And to break that down, it was 40% state that they work between one to four hours of, of per week overtime. 23% work five to nine hours per week overtime, and then 8% work 10 to 14 hours per week overtime, and a couple percentage points that work more than that. Only 26% of genetic counselors do not work overtime hours regularly. And keep in mind, a lot of the time, those overtime hours aren't paid because you're a salaried individual. While I used to not mind the concept of working overtime at all earlier in my career, as my values have shifted, I just feel like the week is so short. You get so few hours um, to connect with your partner, your friends, your kid, your own hobbies, connect with yourself. And I want to be protective of my personal time. That might not be the same for all of you, but that's just that's just where I'm at in my life. I think my younger self would be so surprised to hear me saying this now. But as a 30-year-old genetic counselor, that is just how I feel today. I'd like to be protective of my time. I'm totally open to working overtime once in a while, um, but it's not something I want to do regularly and definitely not 10 hours of overtime a week regularly. I think the bottom line is that genetic counseling as a whole is not necessarily the most family-friendly career, but you can definitely find specific positions that are very family-friendly. And the best way to do that, I've learned this from experience, is to talk to the people who are leaving if you're replacing someone Definitely try to get the contact information, email, LinkedIn, a phone number. You can ask them honestly about what the role was like, why they're leaving, which is always helpful to know, and try and suss out whether the reason they're leaving may potentially be a red flag for you or whether it's something that sounds reasonable to you. The other thing I like to do is feel out a company's values. You know, I recently interviewed for a position where the CEO told me, as a CEO, I don't like to work over 40 hours. I found that to be very refreshing and I think you can get a lot of tidbits out of whoever you're interviewing with, whether it's a manager or people who are going to be working at the same level as you um, by asking a few questions during interviews. So bottom line, genetic counseling can be family friendly, but you need to find the right position. Okay, that's all for today, guys. Please subscribe to my channel and like this video. And let me know down below what other videos you'd like to see about genetic counseling.